surplus target. I call Sue Moroni. Thank you, Mr. I want to use um, my further contribution on part one to uh, clarify what Labor's um, voting position is going to be and to also respond to some of the issues that have been raised by the Minister when she spoke and um, also the Chair of the Select Committee, Jonathan Young, when he spoke. Uh, so the first thing I want to clarify is that during the committee stages of this bill, um, the Labor Party would love to support part one and would love to vote for part one, but that will be dependent on the government's response to the amendment that I have proposed. The reason for that is that I think hearing all of the contributions, well, the, the, the members seem to have kind of, I don't know whether to describe them as smirks or frowns, maybe they're smounds um, or frooks, <laughs> I'm not sure which one they are um, on, on their faces. Um, but, but look, it's, it's simply this. If what the, both the, the Minister and the Chairperson of the Select Committee have said when, in their contributions is correct, then they should easily be able to support my amendment. Because what my amendment simply does is it gives certainty to the New Zealand public, to the businesses, to the workers, to the motor car um, operators of the country, that they will not be overcharged ACC levies in, uh, for um, a purpose that's not related to ACC. That's simply what it does. And I think that should be an easy amendment for the, um, for the government opposite to support. But I haven't heard them make any, any response on the amendment yet, and I'd, I'd like to hear a response on it. Because I want to hear a commitment today via the vote on my amendment, or if the Minister chooses simply getting up and saying it in the House, that, the, that, that I want to know that the Minister believes that the bill in its current form would stop any government from using ACC levies and the le this levy setting process for any other purpose but preventing accidents and injuries, reducing injuries and accidents. I want that commitment because if the government cannot give that commitment in this debate, then it is not being financially responsible and transparent when it comes to ACC matters. One thing that I can say about Judith Collins, and I don't agree with her a lot of the time, but in a funny way, she, when she was the minister, she was absolutely transparent about this. She got up in the House and in her press statement when she set the levies in 2013 and specifically said that one of the factors she took into account in rejecting ACC's recommended levies was to get to surplus. She was very transparent about it. What I want to know from the government today is if, they is if they believe that this bill would still allow them to do that. Because if the answer is yes, then that is not financial responsibility when it comes to ACC, and it is not transparency when it comes to ACC. I want to clarify for the members opposite that the objection from the Labour Party is not um, necessarily that must has been changed to should, because we see the need for that level of flexibility. We see the need that we, you know, sitting here today um, discussing ACC levies, we might not be able to foresee everything that's going to happen. So that is not our objection. We agree with those sets of amendments around the guiding principles, but only if there is the backstop to make sure that the flexibility is not so large that it allows the government to mislead the um, levy setting process and use it for something that it wasn't designed for to artificially hike up ACC levies for purposes that are not to do with accident compensation, for purposes that are not to do with reducing the incidence of injuries and accidents in our workplace. And I want that commitment from the government today because their um, past performance tells us that they believe that it should be used for that. However, there's one rider I'll put on it. When I asked the minister if she had Crown Law advice, if she had sought Crown Law advice on whether it was lawful under the current Act to use the ACC levies to get to surplus, she said she hadn't even asked Crown Law for advice. 
Now, there is only one reason why, in my view, a minister would assert that she had the legal right to do that, but wouldn't ask for Crown law advice, and that's because she probably knows that what has happened already is unlawful. Now, if that is the case, then I'm kind of comfortable. I'm comfortable with the bill as it is. If, if we know that that action was unlawful, Mr Speaker... Mr Chair, um, I, if, if we know that it's unlawful, what the government has already done, then there's no need for my amendment, because the law as it stands is, is perfectly good. But if the, if the government does believe, if it believes that it has got the lawful right to do what it has done since 2013, and that is to, uh, by its own admission, use the levy setting process, reject the recommendations made by ACC, have higher levies in place in order to get to surplus, then my amendment is absolutely needed. And my amendment is needed because of what Business New Zealand said when they came to the Select Committee. And I'm going to read directly from their submission because people might not believe it. I mean, it's hard sometimes to believe that the Labour Party and Business New Zealand are singing from the same, same song sheet, but absolutely, in this instance, we are. And the government's on the wrong side of the equation because Business New Zealand said... And I quote, the state of the government's fiscal position, as expressed by the government's accounts, should not be a consideration when setting ACC levies. And I asked Business New Zealand, when they came to the Select Committee, if they would support an amendment, um, such as the one that I'm proposing in Supplementary Order Paper 123, to ensure that the government couldn't do that, and they said they would. They wanted to see a legislative fix to this to stop it from happening again, and the Labour Party is offering exactly that legislative fix. So I want to hear from the Minister an assurance about what her view is as to whether she can, in the, in, in the new funding policy statement, actually set out as a reason for ACC levy setting that getting to surplus could be, could be one of the things she asked for in that fund, funding policy statement. I want to know from the Minister whether in fact it is her view that that is allowable or not under the law as it would exist um, without my amendment, because that's going to be important for our go vote going forward. Um, Mr Chair, I want to speak to, section, uh, to clause 166C of the bill that we are debating in part one, the consultation, publication and amendment of funding policy statement, because um, there will be consultation on that, and that is good for transparency. I accept that there are many parts of this bill that will add to, um, to transparency. But I want to know that when that consultation happens, that the people who are giving the information for uh, the stakeholders that are consulted with will be listened to. Because we had the shambolic situation um, last year, late last year, or it might have been actually probably early this year, where the minister, the ACC minister, went out for consultation on um, ACC levies, and a number of people have told me that during that, that consultation process, they told her that she was about to make a big mess of the ACC motor vehicle levy um, registration process. They told her of um, exactly the models that were in the wrong categories, that they told her of exactly um, the, the problems that she was about to bring on by changing the model, and she ignored all of that advice. She ignored all of that advice. And look what happened next. 20, I think it was 24 models, about 115,000 motor vehicles had to have their ACC motor vehicle, ACC levy reclassified and changed and reduced because that minister didn't listen when the stakeholders told her, when they warned her of the mess she was about to make of that new model coming in for ACC motor vehicle registration. You know, that should have been a good news story for the, for the, um, for the government. It's turned into a complete and utter shambles. So in, in putting 166C, the consultation process, forward, again, I want to seek an assurance from the minister that when she puts her funding policy statement out, I want to know that she, um, that, that first and foremost, she accepts that one of the funding policy statements she cannot require of ACC is for them to make provision for um, the government, help the government out with getting its, its books into surplus. I want to, that assurance from the minister. I equally want an assurance from the minister that in consulting with the stakeholders over the funding policy direction, 
that she will listen to what people are telling her because she certainly did not when it came to the levy setting process earlier this year. She was given specific, and I have seen, Minister, I have seen the information, the specific information you were given by, um, by stakeholders during that process that was utterly and completely ignores, ignored, and that's the reason why you got yourself in the mess that you're in now. I call 